Okay, so today I wanted to show you something you can do with your gel prints. Um, I know people are always looking because we all have a stack of them. If you love gel printing, it just goes on and on. Um, this is one of the things I do, and just abstract art, and it's just, I mean, it's an exercise. It's a way to use a gel prints. It's, it's therapeutic. It's very therapeutic. But late, I've always doodled on my gel prints and drawn on them and uh, put pictures on them. But lately I've been doing this and I found a thing called neuropathic, um, neurographic art. And basically it's a, it's a, te it's a therapy technique, but I'm, I'm not using it like that because art's always been therapy for me. So, but um, basically it's this kind of a design. I will show you how to do it. It's very simple. Anyone can do it. But these are some gel prints that didn't work very well. And uh, I just did the, um, the art on them with a Sharpie. And I'll show you once, once I get done, I'll, sh I'll show you how to get it going, and what you do, and then I'll show you one that I've just finished doing the, this drawing on. And then I'll show you what else you can do with it once you're done with it. Um, but these just have the art, the um, Sharpie art on them. And then these I've added, like this one has, um, it has markers and has colored pencils and uh, I think it's, it's a white gel pen, the little white dots. But as you can see, I mean, this one has colored pencil on it and this one here has colored pencil. And as you can see, you can really go in there with the detail. And, and like, you don't have to just do abstract. I mean, you could get to a certain point and put birds in it, butterflies, whatever. Uh, use your stencils to trace over your stencils and put whatever design you want. But what I start with is like this. I mean, this is really, eh, it's interesting, but it's not a print in itself. But you take something, and I'll probably take this one to show you. But just these plain prints you've got, everybody's got a stack of them that does gel printing. Now this is dark, you could still do this one. Um, I wouldn't do it with black though, you could get a white paint pen. And what I do in black, you could do in white on this one. It would be interesting. But yeah, the whole, um, I'll tell you as I go along. But let's do this one right here. This is a, now you can cut the edges off, which is what I usually do when I start them, but I'm not going to. On this one, I'm just going to get my Sharpie out and get going. Now, basically, what they tell you to do is write on the back of it whatever you're trying to work out in your mind, and then, but I don't do that. And then you just, for three seconds, and I take as long as I like, you just draw lines. Now, that, that Sharpie's seen better days. I'm going to get the big, thick one because you can see it better up there. This is one of those um, chisel edged. Yeah, you can see that better. Now I'm going to go back over that other line. And I go edge to edge with my lines and you can loop them if you like. Make a helix move. Uh, I'm going to go this way. I want something down here. Okay. You can do more. That's enough for me. Now what you do now and this is the neurographic direction, uh, what they do. I'm thickening the lines up. But see here where it comes to a point? This is where you want to round that point off. You don't want any, any pointed intersections. That's what they tell you. And it does make for an interesting print. Anywhere it comes to a point, I'm going to grab it and round it out and then fill it in like here even though that's a very gentle point I don't want any points and then there and here I'll do a section to show you now. I'm smoothing out even the soft points like there. I'm just putting a rounded edge on that little piece in there. 
and a rounded edge here. See what I'm doing? How I'm just rounding them out where they come to a point. Oh, that's a little sloppy, but I don't usually draw out here. I usually draw in the house because the glare, I mean, it, the light out here is great for gel printing, but it's too much, it's too much light for me for drawing. The glare is, kills my eyes, but see what I'm doing? And I'm not going to do this whole thing. You get the point. I'm just going to do a section of it, and then I'll show you what I go back and do after I've done And I thicken lines where I think they need to be thickest. This is kind of a simple one. Anyways. Now once I got all that done, and I would do it everywhere, some lines I would thicken, some I would leave thin. Then I would go back and look and see, like, what sections do I think could benefit from something else? Or do I need to put some more lines through it? Like, do I think this area is too wide open? Well, I could go in, add a line that way. to give that more interest right there. Now at the bottom where, where I, where mine end up in the edge, I always make them thicker. I make what I call feet so that they don't look like they're just lines going out into nowhere. They look more like little feet. See what I mean? Now, I'm not doing that side right now, but I, if I had it all finished, once it was finished, I would come over here and i say, what do I think it needs? And I would probably put some circles like right here. Now here is where you could get your butterfly template and do a butterfly or whatever you like. I'm going to do three circles here. And then I'm going to come over here and end them there. And what I will do is fill in beside them. This is how I add my circles all over the place. It's like peas in a pod here. It's not what I intended, but that's what it looks like. And then here where it's a sharp point, I would get rid of that. Down the end, I would get rid of that. And that would probably thicken this line up. And see, I would go and fill in areas. As you can see, I would fill in areas until I got the design I wanted. This one I probably will do a little more to, but you get the point. You fill in the areas with, you can do lines, you can do dots, you could just do a circle in black if you like. You don't necessarily have to do them in and you can do whatever you want, just what they advise is to round off the curves. If you don't want to do that, don't do that. It just does give it a nice cohesive look. Like I said, I've always doodled on my stuff and lots of times I would take a print and divide it into areas and then doodle different things in different areas. And, and that works nice too. But this is soothing. It's very, very soothing. All right, you would do the whole print like that. Now here's one that I am mostly finished. Now, you don't have to just leave it like that. What I do is I, I was working on this one, but um, what I did with this one was this was all yellow. So I got colored pencils and pulled the colors from around it, the greens from over here and the purple from over there to make it more cohesive. So I'll show you on this. And I'm using our Crayola, which I don't know if you ever seen my thrift store finds, which I found for $1.99, a 48 Prismacolor set for $1.99 at the thrift store. And it was just missing the color black. And I had a lot of black colored pencils, so I snatched that one up. But you can also use Crayolas. Crayola is not a bad colored pencil. And you can use these. You don't have to buy an expensive set of Prismacolor. 
Um, and also, I got these at thrift store, the Crayola Twistables, and they work really well. They're colored pencils. You just twist them. Well, let me show you with a darker one. That one's not going to show you much. Ah, oh, here we go. Here's a dark gray. See? Works just fine. You don't need the expensive stuff. I don't know how much the twistables are, but I'm sure they don't much. All right, so I would go in here. I'm probably going to do some more work around there, but let's hear where it looks finished to me. Let's do. All right, so I'm probably going to pull this color, the reddish pinkish color, up over here. Oh, let's do this one. I don't know what color this is, but let's get a couple of them and see. And this is my other find lately. Amazon. I don't remember how much. I think it was like $10, $15 maybe, but oh, love that sharpener. It works beautifully in my colored pencil. So I'm going to come down a little bit and hopefully stay in focus. I should tape the paper so I don't get out of focus. But okay, I want to bring that color up into here. Now you can do it lightly, which lets the other colors that are already there show through. Or you can really press down and cover the colors. I'm going to do it lightly this time. I'll show you a part where I... This one here, I really press down on them. And uh, these are Crayola, believe it or not. And I really pressed down because I wanted to see if Crayola would work well before I told you it would because I hadn't tried it. I know it's always worked well for everything I've done with it. But see how that brings that color across to there? Now I might want to hit it here too. Maybe here. Do it lighter so that that pattern underneath shows through. And this makes it more cohesive. Now what other colors do I need to... Alright, now these blues from over here. Let me get to my second layer. I couldn't believe when I saw the 48 Prismacolor pencils for $1.99. Somebody was crazy. I can't believe because our thrift store isn't as cheap as some are. Alright, let's do... Let's do kind of a lighter blue. A teal, actually. More of a teal than a blue. But let's pull this into here. And see where it's light, it shows up brighter. And that really does brighten it up quite a bit. But all I'm doing is pulling the color through. Now see, that matches pretty good. And when you're done, you can go through and still use your Sharpie to correct things. And you can do large areas, too. I think I might want to do this large area and something. This is a dark blue. Maybe a dark violet blue would be nice. Dark violet. And see, it will only, if I do it light, it will only cover the lighter spots. So it's leaving that pattern, but it's just changing the tone of the, the area. Oh, I'm trying very hard to stay in focus here. But there you go. Now you'd want to, I'd want to pull that up maybe to here. Repeat it in a few places. I like that, so I don't want to mess with that. And then I'd look at it and see if it looked balanced. I maybe could put it right here. A little darker to pull that down. And see, you can go through and work at it and pull the orange through. There's, a, there's an orange tone to some of it that doesn't Go all the way up.
probably needed a blue there, but pull that down. And see, I'm just balancing things. I'm playing with balance with the colors. But anyhow, you can use markers, you can use any kind of color pencils. Um, you can do circles. I like circles lately. I'm, I'm into circles. I don't know why. But like on this one, I use colored pencils, but I use them very lightly. I'd probably go over the black in that because that marker I had, I was using wasn't so good. This I did colored pencils. Some places I went over lightly. The, the red was very dominant in this, so it was hard to do anything. But on this one, I used markers. Those are paint markers. You can do whatever you like with these and come up with something interesting. Thank you very much for viewing my video. Please put a like if you like it because that runs the YouTube algorithms and the more you like it, the more people they'll show it to. And that's helping me a lot. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. There will be more. I've got like five or six different art projects you can do starting off with a, I won't say failed. I, uh, maybe not a failed gel print, but a not very interesting gel print. But um, I will have more videos on this, believe me. I do lots of different things with my gel prints. Thank you very much for viewing my video, and you have a lovely day.